This is Kevin Antrezine of the Dillinger Escape Plan, and you're watching Gear Gods. So this is my main beater. This is the Vigier Excalibur Indus model, which is pretty heavily modified uh, with my own disgustingness on it. Actually, I think if we look up here, uh, it's gone now. I had a huge chunk of my beard in the top strap lock from last night, which is when you know you should trim your beard because it just gets stuck in your, in your locks here. Um, this thing is the beater. Like, uh, it takes it so well. It's got this, this uh, matte finish on it. Uh, we, I'm a big fan of the single humbucker design, no tone knob, just the volume, which I use a lot in this band. It, you know, you push pull for different, uh, with the Fishmans, you get different voices. So that's, I don't use that so much for this band, but in the studio uh, where I record a lot, uh, it can be kind of cool to get a different voice on the same guitar. So, uh, these things are like indestructible, pretty much. Uh, you know, they have all, all the goodies that these things come with. The zero fret, uh, the, there's no truss rod in the neck at all. So you don't have to worry about it ever, like bowing if from humidity, you know, temperature, the whole, the whole works. It always stays in tune and it's always the same. Like this, it, I don't ever pick it up and go, oh man, I need to adjust the truss rod. You know, we flew here, blah, blah, blah. It's always the same, which is what I need because there's so many other things to worry about that is not one of them that I need want to worry about, for sure. Um, the Fishmans are awesome, big fan of the tone. I didn't want to switch to the Fishmans, but my rep, um, Ken, who also plays on Earth, he's, uh, he's a great dude, he kept pushing them on me and then eventually like forced me to try them versus what I was currently using, and unfortunately, they, they won. So <laughs> I was like, shit, I need to rip out all these guitars and put these in. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, they're a little weird. They uh, have a battery pack here and it has a USB charger. So I have to make sure I'm always charged up, but they last for like 200 plus hours. So they're, they're usually, I've never had an issue with that. Um, and there's LEDs on them too, to let you know like, hey man, tell your tech to do his job or something like that. Um, you know, I gotta have a bar on this one. I, I love subtly and sometimes not so subtly using the bar. Um, let's see what else we got. This was the original input jack, but these things uh, are known to fail in this type of setting. So we just bypassed that and we installed a Nutric locking here, which is super important for me. I do this on most of my guitars. So there we go. Can't pull it out, you have to press the button. And uh, let's see, we got these comfort straps, which is also nece like super necessary for this band. Uh, you know, we're gonna get back problems as it is, but these at least help a little bit. This is one of my newer guys. This is a Bumblebee, I guess we can call it. It's a super obnoxious yellow. And uh, obviously it's another Vigier. More of a, you know, Les Paul style body. And this one's pretty much stock. I got this pretty recently. The only thing I really modified right now is I always have to put these little, these are actually like uh, those wrist, like sweatbands around your wrist. I cut them up and I put them in here because otherwise when we do all the percussive stuff, it rings a little bit, but this just mutes it totally. So uh, that's my little ditty I do there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty rad. It's pretty obnoxious. And uh, my drop D guitar for our few drop D songs that we have, mostly everything's an E standard, uh, is this guy here. And like you see, this guy's pretty gross as well. Uh, I got the Fishman's in this one. And uh, again, we have our, our little guy there. And uh, this is the... Um, the GV Rock, and uh, I love these things. Like they, the neck is unreal on this guitar. Like, but this and the other one too. Like, uh, just get in there, touch it, Max. Go ahead, touch it. Yeah, oh, boy. yeah, yeah. You just don't want to stop. <laughs> now these things are un amazing, and like obviously you can tell they take a beating. Again, it has the charging port here, custom fitted in there, and uh, they are pricey, but they are worth every penny. They are awesome. You'll know where that money went. Um, all right, I guess over to the actual rack. Nothing too crazy here. This band doesn't really call for a lot of crazy. It's kind of just like straight up. Um, signal goes to the Line 6. Not the Sure. <laughs> the Line 6 wireless. I think it's a G90. And uh, that gets fed. This. This will sometimes, we're kind of experimenting with this right now. This is the two notes audio. It's a load box for the amps to run into and through. And uh, 
that'll give front of house like a lot of times when we play tighter stages the our stages obviously are pretty insane so my mics will get knocked around or knocked off or just you know whatever so this is like a nice backup plan if i can't see that my mic is gone you can just switch over to the uh the impulse response here it's the it uses the same you know the preamp and the power amp vibe of the amp but it just goes into there and then you can load whatever kind of impulse response and blah 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 fun stuff mm -hmm. so it's like a backup plan in case uh, still experimenting with that you know this is not important but got the drawer got the the gloves you know all the little stuff all the picks tubes backup wireless all the extra stuff you need and don't need hopefully you won't need um, I guess on to the, the fun stuff um, I have the luxury uh, of owning a, you know, a full, full-on recording studio, so I'm a bit of a gearhead, and I, I uh, own a pretty extensive library of amplifiers. Um, most people think I'm insane, but uh, what's awesome about that is I get to go through all of them and just pick which one I, you know, for rehearsals, go through this one, go through whatever, and just kind of through all the recording experience, pick the best one which I think fits for the band. And uh, without a doubt right now, it's, it's the Friedman JJ, which is modified a bit by Dave Friedman. It's blue, obviously, and uh, he did some modification to the channel switching and the master volume for me. It is, it used to have to go, I used to have to dime it to like, not dime it, but go all the way to eight to get to where I wanted to on the JJ channel. And now I can't honestly turn it past two and it's so loud. <laughs> so it's cool, I got plenty of headroom with this amp. Cleans are amazing. The high gain JJ channel is unreal, and uh, it just sounds so perfect. It's you know there's not a ton of bells and whistles, but you don't need it. The FX loop is super transparent. It's awesome. Uh, my backup right now is the Splawn Nitro, um, which is also awesome. It's a unique, very unique sounding amp. Um, that's cool too. But you know this thing has so been so reliable that I haven't really had to go to the Splawn much on this run so far. So. Um, for the effects end of things, I'm using the uh, FX8 from uh, Fractal Audio. This is the brand new Mark II that just came out. They were nice enough to send me one over for this run. And uh, it's, it's pretty much everything I need for this, and w you know, way more than I need, honestly. Um, the great thing about this, as opposed to some other systems, is that this also has built-in relays, so it'll switch the channels on my amps as well. So with like, you know, maybe an amp modeler or, or something of that extent, you don't get to use both. But if I'm gonna stick in the tube, you know, amplifier realm, this is like the best way to go for me. Because if I need to go to clean, I just hit the clean button and it'll turn all my effects on for the delays and blah, blah, blah. And it also switch the amp to clean. So I don't have to hit like clean on the amp and then all the effects, you know, so it's just one thing and every, you know, millisecond or second or whatever you want to say in this band counts, especially when switching because transitions happen so fast. Um, so this is like the simplest um, way to do it for me. And uh, you know, got a little whammy here, always resets back to the heel position, which is rad. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. This is a Splawn cab that's fitted with uh, a couple different Eminence speakers. This is the Eminence Man of War and the Eminence Governors. This is the first time I've ever used Eminence anything uh, in guitar, and I honestly think it's crushing sounding. It sounds so good, and I I feel it's stupid that it's taken me to the age of 33 to actually try something like that out, and it's just one of my favorite sounding cabs, and again, I have at the studio like a, a massive wall of just stupid amounts of speakers, but uh, this is one of my favorites right now for sure, and uh, Orange also is a, Alex Orange is a good buddy of mine. He sent us over this Orange 412, which is great. For the larger stages, I get to bring both out. It kind of just helps me. I don't need it for volume, but it helps with the spread back here because we do move around a lot on the stage. So, um, you know, if it's only a 412 and I go off to the side, I'm all of a sudden gone. You know, there's a hole on the stage. So this just helps fill it out a bit better. These are, these are Dunlop. These are the Jazz 3XLs. Um, they sent this over a whole bunch of different picks to try. And uh, I really like Jazz 3s, but they're a little small for this type of setting. Uh, they'll slip out of your hand really easily. And um, these are just big enough, but not too big. And they're, they're rad. These things have a composite neck, which means it's, I, I don't know, it's not wood. 
The fretboard is wood and it's got epoxy forced in there so that 